Welcome back to 100 Days of Six Minute Stories. My name is Andrea Kwamya. And for the most part, I'm a relatively reasonable person um, and responsible. But there is a part of me that likes to take a few risks. And I've had a few moments in my youth where I made a decision that I probably wouldn't advise to anyone <laughs> to try and attempt th such a thing. So in 2012, that is the year where I took a semester off. And like I had have mentioned in the past, I always was working to pay my way through school. So I couldn't really afford to just take a semester off. I had to find um, ways to pay for my loans and for my apartment. And I remember it got to a point where I was like a little bit uh, desperate in, in search of what am I going to do now? I can't sit around for um, three or four months doing nothing was essentially my thought. So I was starting to look in other careers that might be lucrative. And one that I came across was uh, basically a personal assistant. I've never had an interest in being a personal assistant. I have too many opinions, <laughs> but when I saw basically the price point for um, not yet having completed my degree, I was interested. And I came across an offer of a tech CEO in Seattle who was willing to fly me out to have an interview and, um, and to get to know if I would fit in with the company and his lifestyle. So <laughs> that said, I did not think that my family would appreciate the idea of me flying across the country to meet someone that I have never uh, been acquainted with and at the time it wasn't really common to do uh, video conferences and things like that. Um, so I decided to <laughs> book a flight or the company booked a flight for me and I didn't really tell anybody. I, maybe I told my sister, she'll correct me later if it's wrong, but <laughs> I, there were a few people that knew that I was not in New York. So I was flown to Seattle, I was put up in a hotel, and um, they even gave me a stipend for food and just, you know, to enjoy the city. And in terms of meeting the CEO, it was, as anyone might imagine, uh, sort of like a creepy tech nerd that had a little bit of a Napoleon complex, um, neither here nor there, but I did not pass the interview. He asked me a very awkward question of if there was something that seemed weird going on in the house and he told me not to disturb him, would I disturb him? And I said, absolutely. <laughs> so he said that I could not be the, um, you know, the Alfred to his Batman. And I was completely fine with that. So knowing that I was going back to New York the next day without a job, uh, I remember sitting at the uh, the hotel bar. I was watching the Olympics because it was Summer Olympics at the time. And this really fun, crazy couple, a, a pair of lawyers, had just gotten off a flight um, from Hawaii. And we started chatting. And we ended up, you know, having drinks, going out to dinner. We just had a fun night out. It was like I made new friends and we made friends with other people down the line and it turned out to be a crazy night that where I got home at like 3 or 4 a.m. I set my alarm because my flight was around 11 a.m. and I was like, I can't miss my flight. I need to get back to New York. Like everything was being covered for me, but it's no longer going to be covered. I wake up the next morning I look at my watch, 10.30 a.m. I've, I've never been so flustered running around trying to see, am I, can I make this flight? There's no way I'm going to make this flight. And I was just in a panic. I had to check out also within that hour. And I didn't have any miles. I didn't have any money to buy a last minute same day flight. 
So I go to, I'm calling the airline and they're like, we can't put you on another flight. Like everything is delayed. Um, you're going to have to wait to go on standby. And, and everything was just booked up, booked up in the summer. So I end up going to uh, an, a local mall and I was sitting at the bar and I finally, finally have to call my dad. I call him and I'm like, I'm in Seattle. <laughs> I came for an interview. I didn't tell anybody, but I'm stranded here. And my dad says, you have to figure this out. Like talk to the airlines and get them to put you on the next flight. So for two days, <laughs> I couldn't find anything and I didn't have any funds so this is where I do not advise this I ended up having to couch surf I would I just I went online couch surfing appealing to strangers for the fact that I was stranded and luckily I met some amazing and kind people who made sure I was well fed and housed and actually showed me around Seattle and I had an amazing time, even though there was always that burning anxiety that A, I had lied to my parents and that I got myself in a situation where I couldn't get back home if I didn't have the kindness of, of, um, of someone who cared about me. So at the end of the day, my dad revealed that he had frequent flyer miles and he could indeed get me on the next flight, but he let me sweat it out for a couple days so that I could absolutely learn my lesson. So that was, uh, I have to admit, it was an amazing experience, at least so I can have the memory. But if you are one of my younger listeners or my baby cousin, do not feel the need to go on a reckless adventure in order to make your parents have a heart attack because they will either help you and you can deal with the guilt or they will let you learn the ultimate lesson by stewing in what you have brewed for yourself. So that's my only experience with Seattle. Hope I can get there again sometime as a responsible adult and I'll see you tomorrow.